Okay, so, uh, hello everybody, uh, I'm Andrew, aka That Gamer Ajax, do uh, you guys want to go ahead and introduce yourselves really quick? I'm Ogeet777, aka Ogeet Sama, Ogeet Senpai, or just plain daddy. <sighs> I'm immediately going to regret that being wrong, aren't I? Yeah, you are. Okay. Uh, I can't match that. I'm going to stay quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the quiet guy sitting in the corner. Uh, welcome welcome to the gameplay for Emberwind. Hope you all enjoy it. <laughs> God. Okay, so this is going to be the first session of our group's uh, Emberwind Skies of Axia playthrough. Um, I know that I've been excited for the system for a little while. Before we get started, I uh, do want to throw out a couple of quick things. Uh, with Emberwind, this is a d20 system. However, unlike Dungeons and Dragons, you don't want to roll high, you want to roll low. So if you see uh, dice rolls that are going on or you hear dice rolls, uh, it, the lower you get, the better it is for your success. Um, unfortunately, one of our players is actually missing tonight's session uh, due to a work conflict. So I will actually be filling in because this is a game that you can run without a game master if you wish. Um, my character will not be making story uh, decisions is basically just going to be another body that we are going to be throwing out uh, onto a battlefield just that way these two don't get absolutely annihilated by the enemies that are going to be there. Uh, I do have faith in them, but I would rather, really rather them not die in our first session. Couple of casters, we need a flesh bag. Yep, pretty much. Um, however, uh, for story purposes, I will say that my character Mars is going to be mute. So uh, it he'll be speaking probably through a, a known kind of sign language that you guys will have a basic interpretation of. Uh, so don't expect me to be making any major story decisions for you guys. And a quick content warning, when it comes to uh, this campaign setting in particular, there are references to drugs, so I just wanted to go ahead and just be upfront with that. Uh, however, it is very minor in the grand scheme of things, and it should not really impact our overall playthrough. So, uh, do you guys want to go... Can I get you guys to introduce the characters that you are going to be playing? Absolutely. I am playing Gixa Iwadi, uh, who is a spiritualist. Uh, that's the uh, class that he is. Uh, also, he is a sage who studies the stars. Uh, I am playing Aylri Kiran, um, who is a elderly elf. Um, Kind of, kind of into a little bit of the underworld and uh, makes a living off of being a uh, fortune teller. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and read the prologue for this adventure, and then let's go ahead and dive right on into it, shall we? So, let's go. Uh, with the setting of this campaign, the group has been hired uh, by a Kendrick Maddox, who is a an up and coming power in the city of Adriel. Uh, the world of Axia has a miasma all along its surface, so uh, civilization has taken to the skies with these giant floating cities that are powered by crystals that keep them afloat. So uh, you guys have been uh, hired, and uh, another quick uh, thing is that we are going to be having a campaign clock, so if I could have a, uh, either one of you or both of you even keeping track of where we are with that, it is going to impact the story later on. Uh, this is something that I'm personally really excited about as a game master, just to see how this goes moving forward. So We're going to destroy it. <laughs> so, with the prologue. Uh, for generations, parents have regaled their children with the tales of Adriel, the great city in the sky. They say it is a proof of humanity's ability to conquer the toxic miasma that has swallowed the world of Axia. The cloud utopia is a hub of learning, commerce, and culture more vibrant and diverse than any of the great fallen empires. And so it is, for those in the upper reaches of the metropolis. Gelspar, on the other hand, is a dangling eyesore the rest of Adriel would prefer to forget. Fortunately, it's easier to get away with things when no one is looking, which is why you are on the way to Gelspar this evening. You've been instructed to meet at the foot of the clueless prince, the crumbling statue that stands guard over the eastern uh, square between Gelspar and the Red Market. It used to depict one of the noble founders of the city, but vandals removed the head years ago. Time has eroded any other identifying features, and now his headless gaze is a symbol of Adriel's indifference to the district. The citizens above can't be bothered to fix anything below, not even in praise of one of their own. 
Today, the Princess Square is nothing more than a convenient meeting place, a no-man's land between the two districts. Almost all the market stands that once filled the space have moved on. The few that remain are unlike, they stay for long. A woman flanked by two sentries with long spears emerges uh, from the mist with a lantern held aloft and approaches the base of the statue. Both sentries have the Maddox emblem, a serpent coiled around the trunk of a large tree etched into the breastplates. Welcome to Galespar, she says warily, eyeing each of you. My name is Elise. I work for Kendrick. And now, so do you. So I suggest you take a moment to become acquainted with each other. So do you guys want to go ahead and introduce your characters to each other? Yeah. Uh, hello. I am Jack Iwadi. I am an astronomer. I hopefully am able to uh, provide any sort of assistance. Uh, the spirits talk to me and I can help us. Uh, you know, bring in sort of that knowledge from beyond. Uh, what the, what does Geico look like? Uh, sort of like a tall, lanky gentleman um, dressed in rags, ro- like a robe made out of rags, uh, kind of cloak, um, nice little wiggly mustache. Uh, he's just pretty much dressed in purple. Um, Try to usually he choose usually trying to hide his face, you know, not to be really seen. And Ulrich. So oh, you look at the stars. Yeah. A bit of that myself, but we'll just have to see what your fortune may hold for you. Uh-huh. And Ailry is uh would be elderly for a human. Um But being an elf, um, he's about uh, 75 years old. Uh, He's got a slim build. Uh, He he carries around a a large staff with a uh, scythe blade at the top of it. Um, He's got long black hair and gold eyes. Stands just short of six feet. Um, And his robe's a little bit on the darker side, um, a maroon. Um, and he's got a little, uh, like how some wizards carry, like the book scroll on his hip. He's got a little, a smaller pouch that houses a deck of tarot cards. Okay. And also uh, standing amongst your group is a known gladiator in uh, Adriel that uh, you know him to be Mars Atana, also known as Mars the Mute. Uh, he is a, a short and stock human, uh, rather uh, burly bald head, a uh, long scar going uh, from the top of his head almost down to his jawline that covers one of his eyes. Uh, he also does have a uh, scar along his neck uh, and is very, wearing very bright and colorful red and gold armor. Uh, you know him to be trained as an Atlanta. They are more of a kind of frontline uh, fighter style uh, class. Uh, being a gladiator, you, you've seen him fight before and he is something to uh, behold, albeit with a kind of brash fighting style between a shield and an axe. So, at least uh, toss, tosses your group a small bag containing 10 gold pieces. So you guys can go ahead and add that to your overall inventory. For traveling expenses, she says, you'll find Kendrick of the Starlight Commons in the heart of Gelsbar. He doesn't like to be kept waiting, and it's a bit of a walk, so you'd better get going. Oh, and do try to stick together. And that part of town can be dangerous. Elise begins walking toward the Red Market, but you sense something uh, has been left unsaid. If you want to know more about Gaspar, this is your only opportunity to ask her. However, questions take time, and it seems that it is a resource you cannot afford to waste. So, what is, what's unique about Emberwind campaigns is that uh, this is kind of like a path system. Uh, I'm going to have you guys decide what we are going to do by using a standard vote. We have two paths ahead of us. You can go to your meeting in Gelsbar, or you can ask Elise about the area. As a storyteller, uh, once you guys choose, I will reveal what happens, and then we'll move on from there. These are my streets. I think we're good. If you want to move on, we can go continue with this meeting. Uh, We shouldn't uh, have anyone waiting for us. Sorry, you, you were a little muffled on my end. I didn't hear what you said. Uh, no, we should uh, move on, of course, because uh, we wouldn't want anyone waiting on us. Okay. 
Well, in that case, there's no point in delaying your trip with unnecessary questions. At least it's not likely to tell you anything you cannot learn from Kendrick. <laughs> so then I get to move on. He's he's got to play one of those pick your own story <laughs> adventure books right now. Pretty much, I, I do have the campaign. I, I do have the physical uh, campaign book in front of me. Um, also, just just a quick heads up, I'm going to be rolling physical dice just because I prefer the click quacks, as you can probably hear now. Uh, but if you guys want to either roll physical or on roll twenty, that is entirely up to you. I didn't know I had that choice. Uh, okay, look, the thing is that you guys have been my players for, like, the better part of two years now. I trust you completely with rolls. I, am yeah, I just don't want to get on my dice. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, that's a long walk. I've been up once. I'm going to stay okay. over here. Okay. <laughs> I've uh, been drinking. <laughs> okay. Anyways, it's a long walk to the bookshelf. <laughs> the streets of Galspar are deserted as you approach the Hacksaw Bridge. Only a few sheets of metal separate you from the vast abyss below. To fall off Gelspar is to fall off the edge of the world. You don't even know if you would ever hit the ground. The bridge is a dilapidated structure of wood and sheet metal running between two of the larger vessels that make up the slum's core. In better days, a railing provided some degree of safety for the careless and clumsy. It has long since fallen away, exposing travelers to high winds and a precipitous drop that has climbed many drunkards. Even now, two bodies slump against the building next to the bridge, only a few feet from the edge. Whether they are drunk or dead is anyone's guess, but a hangover will be the last of their problems if they roll um, out of the wrong side of this bed. So there are two men that are at the foot of this bridge that may need assistance. Uh, now, on the other hand, they are easy prey to pilfer from them as well. Do you want to take a closer look and decide what uh, to do with them? Uh, so you guys have the options of assisting or stealing from these two gentlemen. And are these the two guys on the beds? Uh, they are next to the bridge. Um, you you can also choose to ignore them if you would like. Ah, so we had a third choice. Y you do yeah. have you, you do have a third choice. This is a detour for the campaign. Thoughts. Am me as being me, I kind of want to help them. But me as being my character, it's it's definitely something that a Aylry would definitely leave them to whatever demise they may find here. He's not one to get involved in. So you wish to just proceed, yes? Okay. So, uh, you guys do not add anything to the campaign clock. You guys are avoiding all the traps. No traps. <laughs> We're doing this in record time. One night. Okay. Speed run, boys! <laughs> Basically. Uh, the surrounding shadows grow deep every minute you stand at the edge of the Hacksaw Bridge. The derelict span looks like it might fall apart at any moment, and who knows what criminals lurk nearby, ready to prey on anyone foolish enough to try crossing the bridge after dark. Uh, this is going to be a, a decision crossroad, um, and because of the way that you guys have been playing, you do have a couple of options that are uh, available to you. You can, scout, option. you can you can scout for an ambush uh, on the bridge, you can check for traps, or you can go ahead and proceed across the bridge. Wait, we're speed I'm not good at any of that. Like, I, I feel like if we're speed running, we just go across the bridge, but... Uh... Ailery, yeah, knowing that this is a dangerous place. Um, I mean, almost, yeah, I think we, I, I, yeah, I'm. Ailery would definitely try to scout it out. Yeah. I don't think he'd right. for traps, but he'd definitely try to scout it out. Okay. Yeah, okay, we can do that. Okay, Absolutely. I, need, I do need both of you to give me a skill check, please. Now, uh, while they are making their rolls, uh, for anybody that's watching, uh, this is basically a past success. If they roll uh, at the number or below with their associated skill, then they succeed. And if they roll above, then it is considered a failure. And what kind of skill check? Uh, this is a stealth skill. And if either of you have a Gelspar as an anchor, you do have one stack of advantage. Ooh, that's me. Uh, my stack of advantage is worse. Um, yeah, I don't pass. Okay. I got an 11 versus five. I do succeed. Yes, I did see that. With that seven. Okay. I get shot in the back of the head. You get to continue the campaign. <laughs> Woo! So, so uh, the near end of the bridge is lined with abandoned buildings and rubble. They would all make good hiding places for an ambush. Let's see. You're about to get... So as, as you guys uh, kind of make your way onto the bridge... Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Geikso, you... Uh, 
You're about to conclude your investigation when you catch the slightest movement in the corner of your eye. A cloud of smoke and shadow slowly takes shape beneath an overhang on your side of the bridge. You can barely make out the outline of a monstrous hound that seems to meld into the darkness. The hound takes off as soon as it realizes it's been spotted. As a second uh, joins a moment later. The two beasts lope across the bridge and slip into the shadows on the far side. There may be danger ahead, but you should not have to worry about getting ambushed from behind. Uh, I need you guys to add one to the campaign clock. Okay. okay, so uh, after these hounds uh, rush out past you, uh, you're about to start across the bridge when a shrill scream pierces the night. A woman runs into view on the other side, a chorus of deep barks and howls erupting uh, behind her. Gasping for breath, she staggers towards you, arms outstretched. Please! she shrieks. Anyone! Help! The city does not stir. Her cries echo and die in the silent, indifferent streets. And Gelspar sticking out one's neck is a good way to get it broken, and the courageous seldom uh, live very long. A moment later, you see the creatures chasing her. Three large, misshapen hounds emerge from the shadows uh, of the alley and stalk toward her. These are very similar to the ones that you just spotted. The woman stumbles halfway across the bridge, falling with a cry of pain. Her knee buckles as she attempts to stand. The three beasts uh, close in on her from all sides, their hungry jaws gaping open to reveal massive protruding fangs in front of the serrated rows of teeth. They snap and snarl at the woman, but seem to be waiting for some kind of signal before moving in for the kill. A cowled man with a face painted like a skull steps into the view on the opposite end of the bridge. He approaches at a steady pace, a barbed leather whip in one hand and a gleaming dagger in the other. The woman looks at you, her eyes making a desperate appeal. This don't concern any of the man says to you. We're all friends here. Now move along, before someone gets hurt. Wouldn't want to upset the boss. You're quite certain you've never seen this man before in your life. Please! The woman begs again, her voice, her terrified voice barely audible above the growling beast. How can you be so cruel? Okay, so we are going to move into what's called a snap vote. Uh, both of you at the same time are going to choose to either ignore or defend the woman. So we'll do a countdown. Three, two, one. Oh, I just did ignore, sorry. I, <laughs> I, I, I realized I did nope. It was uh, not typing. <laughs> I was typing, but it was not typing the designator. <laughs> well, so just because one of you picked to defend the woman, uh, this is a weighted path, and you guys are going to move into combat, which means... Let's see. These are my people, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the, ha the hounds growl, their hackles raising as you step forward. You tighten your grip on your weapon and prepare for combat. And we, with that, we are going to move. Okay, and I get to skip forward a few pages. <laughs> Twelve pages. Okay, and I'll say that you guys can be on the bridge. So, uh, also, I will uh, fully apologize. I did not, I did not get the map uh, right on this one. So, uh, we got one here. I need one here, and then I'm going to put Mars uh, behind you guys. He's the flesh bag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am using the official tokens for all of this, so... Uh, Diego, if I could get you to put Geikso, like right around here. That way you can actually move him. Ooh, we're tier two. I can actually hit things this time. Let's see. It's going to be great. Oh, yeah, that's right, I can't add things. I can add my health bar, though. I can do that. There we go. I was like, it took me. Bar three, health. How much health do I have? 37. 37. Hey. I can't see my window now. Boom. Boom. They said, I got a health bar. Okay, so also I do need to know who's going to be going first in the initiative. Um, I chose to defend. I'm going to go first. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mar, let's see. So it's going to be that, then those. I feel like uh, Gags was just going to be like, I'm going to walk past all of this. Hey, uh, like, Gaggio, yeah. are, are you okay with going last? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay, so at the top of the initiative, uh, you guys, as you look across this rickety bridge, uh, these kind of holes here, uh, as you can see, this bridge is barely holding itself together, and you see that these are shards of broken glass. 
So, uh, Hell drives. basically, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Ari, what would you like to do? Um, about the only thing that I can do right now. Um, slow to move five squares. Um, I'm assuming this, uh, this square right here is, uh, count um, each, yeah, count each of these squares. These squares that are on the actual map as one square. One, so two, it, it, it's going to three, four, five. Uh, Unless I can step across. I'll, I'll I'll say that you can step across. Um, so like each of the squares that are drawn out on the map, count those as one square. I, as I said, I did not. Oh, each of the ones drawn. You didn't get it. Yes. To yes. Scale. I did. Oh, I did not get yeah. this to scale properly, and I do apologize for that. Um. I'm still learning World 20. I'm just used to doing custom. Oh, I'm here. So that's one, two, three, four. I can get to there. Yep. I lost it. It's like right there, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, we're just going to have a buff round. Um, and I'm going to drop a well of power on myself for my last two action points. Okay. Nice. Because Shifting Sand says I can do that now. <sighs> Eritrea, well, draw. That's your well of power, right? Uh, Yeah. There you go. Okay, so now it's going to be the Bloodhound's turn. Uh, so what's cool about this game is that it does have a AI system, and as a storyteller, I don't really have to do a whole lot. All I have to do is roll a d6. and this Find out how much it's going to bite me for. We rolled a 2, so this first one gets to move and then make an attack. And I'm, really so, I'm so happy that you moved up, I'm not going to lie. Well, I bet you are. Uh, so this one is going to roll up. I need you to give me my a... toughness is zero. So, I need you, uh, let's I, go. I need a dodge uh, check, please. Dodge? Oh, you hit me. Not even talk about that. Ooh, I was close though. I got a six out of a four. Okay. So uh, as this first bloodhound rushes towards you, you are going to take all the damage. Uh, thirteen damage pl- uh, yep. versus all. your toughness. Um. So I take nine. Okay. So uh, this first blood hound uh, comes rushing up and uh, makes a big old chomp uh, into your thigh uh, and is not letting go. Let's see. So that it's going to be one, two, three, five. Okay. Actually, so one, two, three, four, five. Uh, also, fun fact about this game is that all of the grunts get to go at the same time. Yeah, they do, and then the big boy gets to go, right? Five? Okay. So that is going to be the hound's turn, as they're just going to be moving. Uh, Mars is going to be up next. Uh, I need to pull up the sheet. Um, da, da, da. Okay. Uh, so Mars is just going to be making a move action. Um, and as, as Morris moves, uh, he's going to take his axe off of his belt and he's going to slam it to get your attention. Guy, so he's going to point at you and make kind of a rapid movement. Uh, he's going to use a trait that's called move as one. Uh, when he moves one other hero within five squares may make a move action as a free action now. Ooh, that's Uh, dope. Two, three, four, five. Mars is going to move up to here. I'll move up to here. Yeah, you do. Okay, did you run over that glass, by the way? No. Okay, just wa- okay. Sorry, just wanted to, just wanted to make sure. Um, so that yeah, I don't know. Okay, so that was my uh, fast and slow action. Do I have any? Let's see. Okay, and then uh, I also have a passive that is called Muse of War, which means that my uh, war songs, um, which are uh, special to the Atlanta, which is kind of like a paladin and a bard class mixed. Uh, those are free actions. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead no. and uh, have my. It's. Uh, you see that uh, he uh, sits there and starts kind of like slamming his axe like into the ground around him in, in a beat. Uh, you guys are inspired by the exhilarating oh. anthem. Uh, you guys may alter your next roll result by plus or minus two. Ooh. And that is going to be Mars's turn. Uh, huh? Now the Houndmaster is going to go. Wait, boy. 
Okay, so I rolled a four that. Okay, so he's going to move towards the closest hero, which is unfortunately going to be you. So it's one, two, three, four. He's five. gonna throw a knife at me. Let's see, hand. I just need to see I need to see what his range is on that real quick. Uh, unfortunately, that's all he's going to be able to do. You're a little too far back. Yeah. That is all he can do. I'm a G. I would still like to go first. Uh, it's it's Geico's turn. Oh, yeah, he does. He gets to go at the end. Yep. Yeah. I was like, he moved, though. I was like, I was confused. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so it's I'm going to go ahead and use my Sanguine Sorcery. Okay. I will use half my HP. Go from 34 to 17 there. <laughs> the next spell I cast is a free action. Get them. Uh, so I will well, actually you use... right next to each other. Hit them with thorns. Yeah, uh, I, I will say that mob are these grunts one and two are actually right next to each other. Just because That's true. I, I, yeah, I, I, I had the spacing on that one messed up. <laughs> that bed of thorns. That's true. That is true. Well, here's the thing. The thing. Um, because I do have a Vengeful Revenant, my penetration is actually going to go up by one. <laughs> oh, no. It begins. <laughs> you know, the stacking my, you know, begins. Whenever I lose HP, you know, that, that's yeah. what happens. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna actually use a diseased bite, which gets a plus two to penetration, so um, that's gonna be an eight on the penetration. Um, I didn't penetrate, but it was accurate. Okay, so let's see. I, and what are you? What are you hitting with that? Oh yeah, sorry. I was hitting. I was hitting the one right in front of uh, uh, Ari there. Okay. Uh, so that does 12 versus its resistance. Uh, they only have a resistance of 4, so that is going Ooh, to hit it eight for damage. 8 damage. Yes, it That's also suffers 1 stack of uh, poison. Okay, yeah, let's let's mark that real quick. Um, and do I, do does I, uh, when do I tell you when I want to amplify it? Because uh, like... Uh, I think you have to amplify before. Okay, you know the yeah, effect. They, they normally, gotcha. no, that yeah. Makes sense. That makes okay. sense. I mean, because like the, the amplify effect is just, you know. Yeah, you heal for half the damage you deal. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if I have to call it beforehand, fair enough. Yeah. I'll make sure to remember that next time. Okay. Uh, so, um, what, do you want to describe your what your disease bite looks like? So yeah, so my disease bite out of my hand, uh, basically a. Like a vine, a thorny vine comes out, and at the end is a uh, like a red plant with just a jaw, essentially. Like you know, it yeah. can be like a uh, a Venus flytrap of sorts. <laughs> ah. And it just comes in with its with its maw and just chomps on this thing, but it also drools this purple ooze that's po the poison, you know, diseased bite, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, you can tell that this uh, bloodhound is recoiling from the the bite itself, and then the poison on top of it. And you can see that it's starting to kind of pulse uh, through its veins from where it was bitten. Uh, that takes us back to the top of the turn order. Uh, Ari, are you wanting to stay first? Yes, I would like to stay first. Okay, um, guys. So, do you want to stay at the end, or do you want to trade me? Uh, well, I have a question. Yep. I, I get four actions, right? Yeah, uh, you have a grand total of four actions to use. Yes, uh, slow I'm, actions I'm... take two, fast actions are one, and uh, free actions are free. Okay. Well, I've only used two of my actions in that case. That's right, because his movement was on uh, Mars's turn. Yes. Yeah. So, um, it... you said slow takes two, right? Yes. All right. Then in that case, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll do a, a guard of thorns. Ooh. Okay. Hit him up. Ooh, that nine. You're just missing your penetration, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. Just so, barely. Okay. Um, and I know that you've described this one before. They do have a resistance of or a toughness of four, so they are going to take an additional one damage. 
And they each get a stack of poison. Another yep. stack of poison? Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, it just I has forgot. to deal with damage. I forgot that's what your class does. <laughs> oh, I don't. And this I, is where it gets fun. Yeah, this is where Do it gets fun. Do you see fun. the same type of vine wrapping from my hand into the ground? And the the plants with the mall, the you know the little Venus side traps emerge all throughout around them with thorns. Uh, again, oozing the same purple poison. That that's a dope spell to be able to come up through sheet metal like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, and they take and for the folks at home, uh, poison does stack, and it means that they are going to take a one d six of damage. Per stack. per stack, so yeah, this, this is already a very bad move for these guys. Um, uh, guys, so do you want to trade me on the initiative order? No, I am more than happy to Just, you know stay, stay in. The the end? Back. Okay, yep. Ari, you're up then. Um, we gonna go ahead and uh, I would like to start my turn off um, by making a focus roll. Um, my focus is 14. I rolled an 11. Okay. Um, so you pass. That will allow me to add plus one healing or damage die to my next action. Okay. Um, and then I will use uh, another fast action to drop a healing dew on myself, uh, which will heal me for 10. <laughs> so you're back at the full health again. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then... Because I can. Uh, I have a range of five. So I'm in the square. One, two, three, four. Um, I'm going to reach out to the big boy. The beast, the um, hound master? Yeah, the hound master. Okay. And I'm going to attempt to hit him with uh, my hex of antagonize. Okay. Remind me. Um, antagonize does 2d6 piercing on hit. Um, it's a sustain spell that every the sustain effect on it, I get to add plus one damage die. Okay. Um, to a max of uh, five die, uh, and then I repeat the effect. Okay. Um, once per turn. Okay. So um, and I rolled a nine, which meets my penetration, which doesn't matter because it does piercing damage anyways. Okay. Um, so this will be. I don't have enough dice because I get to add a damage die from my focus roll. Um, so 2d6 is 9, uh, plus my last d6 will make it 11 okay. uh, points of piercing damage. Okay, that is a huge hit, actually. Uh, go ahead and uh, describe how you do this hex. Um, I pull out uh, a nice uh, tarot card out of my deck after I drop a small uh almost star like uh I like a almost a star like entity type thing on top of my head and I feel a little refreshed and I pull out one of my tarot cards and uh homemade tarot cards are special. So you look at it and it just shows this like ghastly face with a spear cutting down through the head at an angle and I just kind of toss that in his direction as it manifests, and you just see this little spirit start to float around him and kind of prod at him. Okay, and as it's prodding, you actually see it starting to cut through the leathers of his armor, and you actually see that he's starting to bleed from multiple uh, spots. That is going to be the Hound's turn, so the one that is in front of you is going to make its move, and it will get five. So it is going to, let's see, well, unfortunately, I don't think it can really move because you are the closest hero to it. Uh, yeah, I am. Yeah, so what uh, you actually see uh, this hound kind of leans back and then pounces at you. Uh, this is an auto hit uh, because it has a special ability for that. And you are going to take uh, 18 points of damage versus your toughness. Yeah, um, I mean, I take a lot of damage there. Yeah, um, I need you to make a willpower save, please. A willpower save. Ooh, yeah. I'm good at this one. Uh, that is a six on an eight. Okay, so uh, my so willpower is an eight. Okay, uh, as this hound uh, pounces on you, also uh, Diego, I need you to roll two d six for me, please. For yes, the, sir. For the poison. 
Uh, Plus it, another D6 for the other one. Uh, but it pounces at you, and okay, so it takes another. That one takes two damage, and then yeah, the other one takes, takes four. four. Okay. Um, this bloodhound uh, pounces on you and bites in uh, deep into your collarbone, but uh, you are able to actually get a leg back, and you're able to hold it and kind of toss it off. Uh, it is not able to knock you down. Uh, it is a really bad time that you're in front, <laughs> Eric. Yeah, it is, but okay. I made this mistake. It was yeah, my choice. Yeah, you did. I live with it. Uh, this one also <laughs> this one's also going to run <laughs> over here and pounce, which is an auto hit. Let's go, bring it. Uh, you That's are... another 18 that points. That is 16 points of damage. 16, okay, uh, so I take another 12. Yeah. And then the other guy walks up and just shoots me in the head and the game's oh, over, right? We're we're not we're not done. <laughs> we're not done with the hounds yet. <laughs> uh I do need another uh willpower check from you, please. Oh yeah, I get to do that. Uh I fall prone. Uh, it's an eighteen. Yes, you are knocked prone, and then uh I'm gonna say just because those other two hounds are already on you and because you're prone, I'm gonna say that Mars is gonna be put in front for this one. Uh, that is a three, which is going to make a basic attack, which means that I get to make a dodge check. That definitely hits. And it rolled a one. Uh, funny enough, my uh, Mars's toughness is high enough that you see that this uh, hound tries to bite into him. And he actually, uh, it doesn't even get through the armor. Uh, around his leg because the armor is so high. Nice. Okay. Uh, and then Mars is up. Sorry, I need to look at my traits again. I'm not used to being a player, guys. This is weird. Welcome to life. I know. It's great. Uh, let's see. So uh, Mars is actually going to look down at this uh, hound and... It's going to, let's see, if I actually read that right, I can expend the facts action. Oh, I need to actually see if I hit. Oh, please hit. That is actually going to hit because my accuracy is not great, but it still worked. Uh, I'm going to expend a fast action, so I'm doing a fast action and a slow action. And you actually see that uh, he leans back and his uh, axe glows with a red energy. He's going to bring it down on this uh on the hound in front of him and he's going to use his skewer ability which means that that enemy is going to be instantly not fallen that and boy be prone yeah yeah it is so that I enemy that moving next turn. yeah so that enemy is down uh and that is going to be all that mars is going to do this turn okay. which means that the hound master is up let's see what he does Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> Kills me. Probably. Let's go on our first combat, I die. Let's go. Probably, yeah. Uh, so he is going to walk forward. So that's one. No, he's not. Three. <laughs> so you see from Gitch's arm, a vine, a plant, chop into his own arm. I'm going to go ahead and lose half of my <laughs> current HP and cancel that action. Which action are you canceling? I'm moving. Okay. He's not moving. He's not moving. He's staying back there. Okay. Okay. Uh, and he that puts him just out of range to actually do. Let's see. Him. Yeah, he is um, just out I'm of range to, to do anything. I'm going to use the fast action I saved um, to hit him with an aptitude and cause him to fall prone because he had an action canceled. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell that he? Can you tell that he plays blue? <laughs> Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't know well, what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah let's... Also, I was at odd HP. Is it rounded up <laughs> or down? Uh, I'll say that we can round up. It, it, I don't think that says that in the book. I will probably be corrected on that one at some point. So uh, you see that uh, he's held in place by the curse from Geikso, and then all of a sudden... Just oh, never mind. He can't, he can't be knocked prone. I'm prone and can't do actions. Okay, never mind then. <laughs> He is not knocked prone. Cancel that. I was trying to get rid of his attack. <laughs> yeah. Oh, let's see. So he's still. You are so lucky. You are just out of his range right now. 
Yeah. Okay, yeah, then. Uh, laughing maniacally. Guy show, yeah. you're up. As I do this, I'm like, ah, see, he he is unable to do anything from afar. <laughs> All right, um, that does also increase my uh, penetration to seven. Yeah, no. <laughs> You're just sacrificing your health. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, because it is my turn, I get to actually use uh, Sanguine's uh, Sorcery again, because it's once per round, giving up half my HP yet once again, increasing my penetration up by one again. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use Disease Bite Amplified on uh, this um, number two. Okay. Oh, just oh, <laughs> just out of the head. just out of the range again. <laughs> okay, but that still does hit, right? Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah. My accuracy is fourteen. Okay. How much damage you hit for? Uh, it's it's eleven, 11 versus its resistance, uh, which is and, and four. It's so, uh, let's see. So you're gonna take. So it gets hit for seven damage. Uh, okay. and you I mean, heal. she'll get healed for four. Yeah. And that does that apply another stack of poison? Yes, it does. Oh my god, so much poison. All the poison. <laughs> I almost feel bad for these things. I don't. So they that my leg. Go leaves me with two actions. Yes. Um, actually, last time I, I was left with three, actually, because I actually didn't amplify. Um, yeah. So we have uh, still... Two action points left. Yes. So yes, again, I will use a Garden of Thorns because it can target up to three. And, and he gets the piercing. And, and the crit. I get the piercing and the, and crit. the crit. Okay. <sighs> okay. So what happens when the reason that uh, he has been trying to get either a penetration or a crit means that he gets to do uh, maximum damage and he gets to ignore the foe's resistances. So that is 12 damage. Okay, that is a really good hit, actually. And that hits three foes, so it gets all yeah. three of the dogs. I uh, know. And end it applies a stack of poison. Uh, the this dog is down, like it just oh, like dead, dead. Yes, like when oh, it, when it's fallen. Like no, skewer is great. <laughs> oh jeez. Well, anyways, they go up to three stacks of poison. <laughs> Takes twelve damage oh, if they're okay. still alive. Oh uh, no, they're still. Let's see. Let me let me do some math. It's not my strong suit. <laughs> I think they are barely up. Uh, Can I cash hellish rebuke? No, is that a thing? Can, no, you cannot. <laughs> yeah, the dogs are still up. Actually, okay. Wait until their turn, then they're dead. Let's see. Yeah, we need uh, another. St we're using all the icons on these things. Okay. All the icons. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's going to take us to the top of the initiative. Um, I would like to stay up. To <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so let's just go ahead and stick with the current turn, turn order that we have. All right, you're up. Or, um, I'm going to use a fast action to stand up. Or if you let me go again, I can increase that stack. I'm pretty sure they're probably dead after that 3d6. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, you can um, go. Be, you can go before me if you want. No, you know what? Actually, I no. We'll, we'll leave it as is. Okay. We'll leave it as is. Um, I'm gonna use a fast action to stand up. Okay. Um, because Wellbringer is such a great and powerful thing. Um, I'm gonna drop a healing dew on myself and give myself 10 HP back. Okay. So, how much health do you have now? Um. Who. I forgot. Um, I'm going to drop uh, two healing dues on myself. Because <laughs> so I can do that. 20 health? Uh, that bumps me back up to 31. Okay. Um, and I still have a fast action left, but sustaining costs no action. So I'm going to sustain the damage on uh, Mr. Houndmaster guy. And because of my Woebringer, because he has the sustain effect, I get to increase my die type okay. from a D6 to a D8. Okay. Um, and because it's the sec it's a uh, sustained, I get three d eight worth of damage. Oh boy! Okay, so roll it. Uh, that's ten plus my that's another twelve points. Okay, another good chunk of damage. Uh, as you see, these spirits they they're still surrounding him, and they are just starting to just cut away at him. Oh, and he's starting. Wait, I'm sorry. Um, 
he needs to take an additional uh, eight, eight points of damage. Okay. Uh, from my well of power off of the last two turns. Okay. My tier plus two of damage. Okay. Okay, yeah, he is already starting to not look great. Man, why did I actually join in on this? You guys can find this just fine. Uh, Remember, we're all friends here. <laughs> you ain't no friend of mine. Okay, uh, so that, already that was your turn, correct? Um, I could do something else, but I'm gonna I'm a hold my last fast action. Okie dokie. Uh, so the hound is going to go. Okay, so it's going to make a basic attack against you, Alri. Um, um, first, they each need to take 3d6 worth of poison damage. They, they do. Uh, Diego, do you want to go ahead and roll that? Yes, sir. Kill him. Make him dead. So, 10 to 1. Believe it or not, still standing. <laughs> what are you good for? Okay, so they take t an additional 10 uh, damage, but the poison is definitely starting to wreak havoc on these poor, poor puppies. Poor puppies, my ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Alri, I need you to uh, give me a dodge check, please. A dodge. Uh, I, I don't dodge. Okay, so that means that you take additional uh, 11 points of damage versus your toughness. Okay, okay. Yeah, I rolled a one. And Yay, dude. It's the worst. Uh, and then the other rolled a four. So I do need a second dodge check from you as the other hound starts, tries to bite into you. That's a two. I dodge. Okay, so that one, uh, as the, the first one uh, bites into... Uh, your way. You can feel that you're uh, bleeding pretty profusely, even though you have been healing these before. Uh, you bop it off of you with your staff, and as the other one starts to try to, like, bite at your ankle, you actually take a step back, and you avoid it entirely. Yeah, I do. Okay, I'm going to use a slow action for Mars to move over, and just because I buffed myself with just a bunch of passives, uh, I am just going to make an attack. That is a four. I don't think that is a critical for me, though. Let's see. No, it is not. I just missed my crit, but I do penetrate, so that's great. Uh, I get to roll 2d8. Uh, that is going to be six points reduced to two from this thing. Uh, as I bring my and axe... Uh, no, unfortunately it doesn't. Uh, as uh, Mars uh, sits there and brings his axe down, but unfortunately it doesn't quite get the hold that he was hoping for. Uh, the beast master or the hound master is going to go. I hate to tell you this. Yeah. You're canceling his move. <laughs> You're going to cancel yes, his we move. Are. We're going to go ahead and cancel that move. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to spend my fast action to knock him prone. So I'm going to go ahead and go down back to five HP. Uh, <laughs> okay, hang on. Sorry, I, I I need to check something real quick. Oh okay. yeah. Okay. So, for them being prone... Uh, he has to skip the next action in this chain. Okay, so uh, he's considered off guard. which That is really fun. So that gives uh, plus two accuracy to heroes on their cap checks. And he skips the next part on his chain, but he still gets to uh, get hit. He's going to go ahead and climb back up. And again, just out of range. You guys are so evil. <laughs> it's the resident yeah. blue player. <laughs> I'm not sorry. There's two uh, of us here. Actually, it's, it's a really good thing that you guys cancel one of these moves. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Uh, Geikso, you're up. All right. We are going to go ahead and use our. Uh, sanguine sorcery yet again, making our next spell a, a free action. So we're gonna go ahead and pump that pen up. Use a well. disease bite. We're gonna amplify it. Uh, yeah, my it, it doesn't get it doesn't get penetration, but it still hits. 
I, I will say. And we're aiming this at the uh, at the uh, Houndmaster, by the way. Oh, are you within range for that? Yes, seven spaces. Seven oh. squares. Okay. All of my stuff. Five. He's got more range. Yeah. Okay, so... Let's see. So that 11 is... 11 versus resistance. Versus resistance. Uh, so it does not actually strike him quite as hard uh, as you would hope uh, as he takes three points of damage uh, as you make your disease bite. He does take uh, a sack of poison, you said? Yes, yeah. one sack of poison. Okay. And you get two health back. Yeah. I get two dice back. Um, and you know what? We're just going to go ahead... <sighs> Do we think that, hmm. so to, to Geiks though, these hounds, do they look like they're about to just kick the bucket or Yeah, they're they're looking pretty bad. Okay. Well, you know what? I'll just go ahead and do another disease bite. This time not amplified. Ooh. Ooh, that's, that missed that's, though. That's, yeah, yeah, that missed. Uh, as you launch out another uh, disease bite, the hound's ready for it at this time and is actually able to dodge out of the way. It happens. Sometimes I don't like him. To... Okay, uh, top of the initiative. Uh, do we just want to keep staying in, in this one, or do does anybody want to trade? I mean, I'm good with sitting here. Okay, that's fine. Um, I, okay. Can stay, I can stay in the back. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Ari, right, you're up. Um, reason. Uh, now he has a stack of poison on him, which bumps my uh, sustained damage up to a D10. Um, plus, that gives me an extra die. So we're going to go ahead and sustain and roll my 4 D10 for the damage. That's 12... Uh, 19 points of piercing damage. Jesus. Okay. No, that that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, that's great. It's fine. I don't even need to worry about it. <laughs> also, I, I just realized that I, I made a mistake. <laughs> yeah, you did. No, it's fine. I'm just, yeah. Getting used to the system. Because I should have had the woman uh, be there. That's you should have killed us, too. It was a trap. Okay. Um, Is that your turn? Doggy's looking bad. I still have all of my actions. That's free. Um, and because I don't like this dude, and he's within five squares of me, I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, Tide Turner. Okay. Um, to... Uh, hit him with Price of Pride, which is an auto hit for 3d6 damage. Okay, roll it. Um, with Woebringer, with him having two sacks, that'll bump it up to 3d10 damage. Okay, roll it. Um, that is 17. Those are really how, good rolls. How do you want to do this? Uh, that's 27 points of damage. How do you want to do this? <laughs> um, like, I've stood up. My little spirits, my little spirit guy's just floating around him, and I just... Your arrogance betrays you, friend. You should have left this to the dogs. And I just watch as his pride crumbles before his eyes. <laughs> and his body collapses uh, soon after, as these uh, spirits that you guys have been just obliterating him with uh, essentially tear him to pieces. Uh, I'm going and, to... Uh, I don't need to sustain that because he's dead, and my yeah. other sustain drops too. Um, and we are going to say, for the sake of brevity, that uh, these other two the dogs are going to die at the beginning yeah. of the turn. Uh, yeah, they uh, actually are going to go ahead and collapse from the poison that is affecting them. So let me put markers over. There. Smashed to the ground. Okay. Uh, um, I want to use my other two uh, free action or my other two fast actions to drop healing dues on uh, Geixo. Oh, it, it, it doesn't matter. We're, we're out of time. Oh, I know. I'm completely aware. But I want him to know that I care. He just wasn't <laughs> getting attacked. <laughs> oh, I go from 7 HP. All that damage was all sustained. <laughs> yeah, it was all self-sustained. You're being uh, you little... <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I... 
So uh, the Hound Master reaches for one of his dogs as you deliver the final blow, his body twitching for a moment before going still. Blood flows from the corner of his mouth, trickling across white paint on his cheek. The woman pulls herself uh, to her feet and spits on the body before turning to you. Thanks, she says. First time anyone's ever helped me in Gelspar. I should leave my uh, I should leave before my bad luck catches up to me. She pops her back her arm. Uh, sorry, I I missed some narration here. She pops her uh, arm back into its socket with an audible snap. Her ragged shawl is covered in dust and filth. Dozens of cuts and bruises are visible beneath her tattered garb, but your attention is drawn to the shimmer of purple light radiating from the object she's concealing in her hand. Noticing your gaze, she tucks the source of light into her shawl. I can find a way to repay you. Later, she says. For now, best not tell uh, the Baron you saw me. With that, the woman limps off into the night. Um, I need you guys to add three to your campaign clock. Oh. Um, and uh, the Houndmaster's broken whip lays uh, by his side, but he may have had other useful items. Do you stop to search his body? He doesn't have any use for him. I'm not necessarily a thief, No. Not a thief, but I will just murder everybody with all these other things. It's called self-defense and protecting the weak. Okay, justifiable. So uh, I'm not above it, but I agree. We do have uh, we have wasted enough time. Okay, so uh, you make your way across this really rackety bridge, and you make your way uh, into Galspar. The hearth crystal is the only steady source of light uh, that's in this tower, emitting this uh, bright purple glow. Uh, you follow its uh, dim, flickering glow across the Hacksaw Bridge and through a twisting maze of empty streets and alleys. It is not long before the Starlight Commons come into view. Long ago, it was a resplendent courtyard with uh, with glittering fixtures arranged like the constellations in the evening sky. Today, the Starlight Commons is a crumbling ruin. The jewels that earn the plaza its name are, no, are long gone, and the Gauss Crystal is the only remnant of that former glory. Tonight, an uneasy silence hangs over the area. Even the crystal's usual hum is diminished to a barely audible frequency. Dozens of thugs, many of their faces painted to resemble skulls, lurk in the shadows of the dilapidated square. Kendrick Maddox, the aspiring merchant baron himself, stands between a pair of damaged statues. He wears a black, feathered mantle with an intimidating broadsword strapped across his back. The hilt consists of an intricately engraved pair of entwined serpents below a massive diamond pommel. It makes Kendrick imposing despite his modest statue. Uh, his features are sharp as if cut from stone. He is flanked by a small uh, retinue of spearmen, their fine armor at odds with the scavenged uh, scrap metal and leather garb of the men in the shadows. A woman just took a, another shard of the crystal, Kendrick says, his voice laced with aggravation and impatience. The chasers pursued her the way you came. Did you see her? I don't care if she lives or dies, but the shard must be returned. This is going to be another decision moment for you guys. Uh, you can... Uh, Say nothing, or tell him about the woman you helped. Uh, to each their own. I mean, I'll speak up. I mean, I can't stop him from speaking. Okay. Uh, I'd rather he didn't say anything. But... So, 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 what, what, what are you saying? Uh, we passed a individual, maybe matching your, uh, your your definition, your picture. Uh, she was running across the bridge. Um, seemed, uh, like she had something with her, maybe? Uh, didn't see any, uh, what do you call them, uh, chasers? Um, that's all right, let me, yeah, uh, I, sorry, I need to look at the skills really, really quick. Are you speaking of the uh, the hounds? Uh, go go ahead, and I would like both of you to go ahead and give me a knowledge check, please. And I will say that if you guys, uh, if you have Galspar as one of your um, anchors, you can do it with a stack of advantage. Yay me! Uh, thank you for that stack of advantage. I got a three. Okay, so the Chasers are a gang in the area, and they happen to be dressed exactly like the men that are currently glaring daggers at you. I pull and, my robes and, over my the bites on my ankles, and, and uh, you you can you, you can recall now that the gentleman that you fought on the bridge happened to be a member of the Chasers. Uh, Kendrick listens, his face a mask of cold rage. That woman was a thief, he says. 
The, sh the shard she stole weakened the crystal I'm hiring you to replace. The man you saw heroically butchered was a chaser in my employ. You could not have bungled that worse. He takes a deep breath and glances back at the pulsing Gellisbar crystal. Your honesty is appreciated, but your competence would be far more valuable. Let's put this little debacle behind us and hope your future efforts yield better results. We could have let her fall off the bridge. Then it'd be gone altogether. That is a good point. Please, come. Follow me. Kendrick leads you all to the base of a faintly humming crystal. His personal guards follow at a respectful distance, but the men with painted faces remain in the shadows. You know why you're here, he says in a low voice. All of Adriel knows that Gelspar crystal is dying. What they don't realize is that this slum's future is not measured in months or years. It's measured in days. When the light inside this gym goes out, Gelspar will fall and the miasma will claim it. Um, especially... Um, Already, because you know the Galspar area. Uh, Galspar is the slum uh, of Adriel. It is mm -hmm. it is not in good shape. Uh, this place has it, it just is not a good place to be. Period. He gazes up at the underside of the celestial plateau, determination hardening his features. Fortunately, the chasers have located a new hearth crystal about a day's uh, flight north of Adriel. I expect you to retrieve it. Go to the Port of Dreams and out and wait outside a shop called the Peerless Pier. I contact Hob. Uh, we'll meet you there. He is handling the arrangements of your airship. Kendrick gestures to the painted faces uh, watching you from the edges of the square. The chasers will keep watch here. They should uh, keep any other scavengers at bay, the merchant baron says with a hint of the accusation. That will keep Galspar afloat until you return. That is all you need to know for now, but if you have any questions, I will try to answer them. The crystal seems to be fading right before your eyes. There's not enough time for a full briefing, so you will have to choose your questions carefully. Now, uh, this in terms of gameplay, is called a Divergence Crossroad. Uh, this is navigated by individual players, players rather than a party vote. Um, so each of you have uh, choices that you can ask about. Uh, you can ask about the crystal's location. You can ask about Kendrick's motivations. You can ask about uh, your airship that you'll be using to make your flight north. You can ask about provisions. You can ask about potential dangers. And you can ask about the chasers. And he he said where we were going to get the crystal, right? Uh, that it's just north of here. I want to ask about the crystal. Ow! <laughs> about the crystal. Uh, okay. Uh, so I need you to give me a knowledge skill check. Anybody that wants to ask this, I need you guys to give me uh, a knowledge skill check. And if you have uh, a hearth crystal anchor, you can have a stack of advantage. Ooh, okay, so uh, just a quick question. Remind me what a hard, uh, stack of advantage does? Uh, it allows you to, uh, uh, for each stack, you get to roll an additional d20, and then uh, you take your best roll. Hey, we both got it. Uh, yeah, I'll, there you I'll go. take that, too. Okay. I rolled a five. Okay, well, you can just tell that the, the question seems to make him a bit nervous. Our information is... Imprecise, uh, he says. The chasers have found a shard from a new hearth crystal. Pieces of the same crystal are attracted to one another, so the shard will guide you to its parent. It's an old trick. Hob uses it to track down his airships when people don't return them. But truthfully, I don't know exactly where you'll find it. The chasers uh, won't tell me where the shard comes from, and they would have retrieved it themselves if it were easy to recover. Is there anything else, you would, is there anything else that you would like to ask him? I think the only thing would be just uh, potential dangers. Tell me, what uh, what opposition will we face? Okay, uh, I would like you to give me a leadership skill check, please. Oh, not so good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kendra takes a minute to mull things over. You'll probably have to deal with a few slaughterfish, but you'll be in the azure, so wildlife should be sparse. Beyond that, I expect you'll see whatever it is you'd normally find when you leave the city. I'm no adventurer. I don't know much about rough terrain. Is there anything mm. else that you'd like to ask? Uh, I think I'm good. I think we should be on our way, then. Okay. I'm not too excited about this airship, though. I'd like to keep my feet on... Well, airships are a necessity to travel in this day and age. Well, if that's everything, then you'll be on your way, Kendrick says. 
Take the Sky Elevator and approach the Port of Dreams from the Silver Blades. Still the fastest route topside. Nobody goes there anymore, but I've made sure the lift is still in commission. When you return, bring the crystal straight to my mansion in the span. I'll make my private dock available. Now hurry. If, Gelf or if Gelspar falls, then our names follow with it. Kendrick turns to issue orders to his guards. The chasers continue to menace from the shadows. You head north to the elevator platform, leaving them and the failing light of the Gelspar crystal behind. And that is actually where we are going to go ahead and conclude this session. That is the first act of this campaign so far. Um, I know that there are probably things that I did wrong. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, but this is a new system. We're all learning together. Thank you.